It is finally time for some action in this dynasty. While the Huskies have had a slow 2-3 and three start to the season, including an embarrassing loss last week to UMass at home, that all can change starting this week as we start Matt Conference play and will be taking on Bowling Green on the road to do so. Junior quarterback Ethan Hampton was looking to have a bounce back performance after his three interception game last week, and Coach Brooks's game plan was to get his confidence going early on as that seemed to be working. Now technically, NIU has already started conference play as they played Buffalo earlier this season where they picked up a 29-21 victory over them in week 3. But starting this week with the game against Bowling Green, it was conference play here on out. Already having one conference win gave NIU some confidence headed into this game against the Falcons today. And despite not getting a touchdown, we at least still got some points on our first drive. On a first and 10 for the Bowling Green Falcons, we'd come up with a huge sack which would set up this long and improbable 3rd and 18 where our defense would get the stop, giving us a chance to extend this lead to a two possession game over the Falcons. Coach Brooks wanted to be aggressive today so he would go for it on fourth and two and that decision would pay off where Kenji Lewis would get the call on the pitch sweep the very next play and he would bring this down inside the 10 yard line for the Huskies and the redshirt freshman Kyle Thomas would finish this drive off for us with a touchdown. This was the best start we had had to a game all season yet but we couldn't get complacent as big plays like this could quickly change that. 10 points wasn't a lot in the grand scheme of things and Bowling Green was quickly moving the ball down the field. As on third and 14 we had what should have been another easy stop but we would leave a wide open receiver who would slip a tackle into the end zone and just like that it was only a three point game but we had one play that had been working amazingly for us so far today in this game and that was the wide receiver pitch sweep as we'd give it to Kenji Lewis here who would take it around the right corner and into the end zone helping restore our 10 point lead over Bowling Green as we'd get a defensive stop which would now give us a chance to extend this lead even more over them before halftime as Ethan Hampton was helping us move down the field quickly and the junior quarterback was looking so much better and more composed in the pocket this game than he did against UMass. Unfortunately we wouldn't be able to pick up the first down on the halfback draw so we would send out our field goal unit and this kick was nowhere close. That meant it was still only a 10 point lead for the Huskies so we needed to get a stop here before halftime but let's count. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there is five broken tackles for a touchdown. And that's a pretty crappy way to end the first half for us. A bad ending to the first half didn't mean we couldn't start the second half off good as we would force a fumble and our defense would jump on that where we would be set up with prime field position to try and strike first here to start the second half over the Falcons. And we would go right back to the receiver pitch sweep as Kyle Thomas would take this in for a touchdown. Bowling Green got down the field pretty quickly though and they would respond with a touchdown of their own. But our defense was upset about that so we decided to block their extra point. Instead of only being down a field goal, the Falcons were now down by four to the Huskies who had the ball. We were moving it pretty quickly and efficiently inside Bowling Green territory and inside the 10. That would set up the perfect opportunity for a fake pitch sweep on a wild card counter where Ontario Brown would put us up by 11 after that touchdown and Bowling Green's offense just couldn't catch a break. That holding penalty would set them back to a third and 20 where our defense would get another stop and we now had a chance to put away the Falcons on this drive as we'd go to Kenji Lewis on our receiver pitch sweep and he'd find his way into the end zone but as we've seen throughout many games already this season a game's not over till it's over because the Falcons were in striking position and they could still make this a close game on second and 10 they would find their way inside the 10 yard line to set up a first and goal but Jordan Hansen had other plans for us as he would pick this ball off in the end zone to save a touchdown all we had to do now was run out the clock and so you know what play we had to go to if we needed to pick up some yards and first downs which the Falcons defense had gotten so used to that we could fake them going one way and hand it off going the other way now. That would allow us to possess the ball long enough to run out the clock in the rest of this game. But I had to kick one more field goal just to get redemption for myself. And while the Falcon fans didn't seem too happy about Coach Brooks's decision at the end of the game, I didn't care because a win is a win. Especially when your quarterback throws almost a perfect game for over 300 yards. But I was even more impressed this game by our running attack, not only from Ontario Brown, but also Gavin Williams who averaged over 11 yards a carry this game. That win over Bowling Green would get two-star left guard Jamil Kennedy to commit and we only had two recruits left on our board that hadn't commit yet and they were both scheduled to come visit campus in our week 12 game against Akron. Throughout the season coach Brooks had managed to max out his defensive line recruiting skills, his quarterback recruiting skills, and his offensive line recruiting skills.
skills and was getting to work on maxing out his secondary recruiting skills. Hopefully with a big rivalry matchup coming up against Toledo at home, Coach Brooks would not only get another upgrade for that skill tree, but his team could pick up a big conference rivalry win. Our team got off to a good start on defense today as we'd pick up a stop on third and 10 against the Rockets, which would give us a chance to be the first team on the board today, which would be huge in building momentum for us. This was one of our biggest rivalry games of the season, so we needed all the momentum we could gather here early on in this matchup. And while we weren't able to get in the end zone here on third and three against Toledo, Coach Brooks wanted to stay aggressive and he would go for it on fourth and three and would pick it up, which would lead to a receiver sweep pitch for a touchdown. Toledo would waste no time at all responding back though, as their quarterback would drop back and he would find his receiver who would break the corner for a touchdown. And we would give them another one as Ethan Hampton would drop back to throw in Max and Hook would undercut that route for the Rockets defense and he would take this interception all the way to the house. Not an ideal way to end the first quarter, but a touchdown this drive will get us right back into this game as we were off to a good start. It looked like the Rockets defense had us for a loss in the backfield, but Ontario Brown would turn this into over a 20 yard run, which would set up a first and goal where we would go to Kenji Lewis on the receiver sweep. And the Huskies were right back in this game, hoping their defense could get a stop against Toledo. That wasn't looking like it was gonna happen though as the Rockets offense would get down inside the 10 yard line and on third and goal they would convert as they would find the end zone and would follow that up with a big time sack on Ethan Hampton. That left the Huskies with a long third and 19 as they would give it to Ontario Brown and despite his best efforts fighting forward he would not be able to pick up the first down for the Huskies as the Rockets had another chance before halftime to score now. They would get inside the NIU 15 and would score one more time before halftime and it wasn't looking pretty for us headed into the locker room. We weren't off to the greatest of starts in the second half either against Toledo, and on third and ten, our offensive line would give up a big time sack. After going three and out on our first possession, at least our defense was stepping up for us, and two sacks from our defensive line would force Toledo to go three and out as well. With another chance on offense now, we would squander it away, as that sack would lead to a third and eleven, and Ethan Hampton would get sacked again. Yet our defense was matching Toledo's intensity with another sack. Something needed to change for us on offense, and finally it would as Kyle Thomas would take this pitch sweep down the right sideline and all the way to the end zone for a touchdown. But Toledo's offense seemed to figure things out here in the second half as well as they had the ball and were driving. This play would get them down inside the NIU 10 yard line as they were looking to strike again. And the Rockets would do just that on second and goal from the four. With just 11 seconds to go, it looked like we were going to have a 14 point deficit headed into the fourth quarter. But hopefully this drive could turn things around for us and could kickstart our comeback. On second and five, it would be a play action from the shotgun, and Ethan Hampton would find the senior Grayson Barnes inside the five. As on first and goal, it would be Kyle Thomas again on the sweep pitch for another touchdown. This game was still in reach for the Huskies, as they just needed to get a defensive stop against Toledo, and that clearly wasn't happening. As that is the first time this entire season that we've seen Javon Bird beat deep for a touchdown. Obviously not the norm that we are going to be expecting from him the rest of the season, though. As that great throw from Ethan Hampton would set up this touchdown in the back of the end zone, but our kicking struggles still continued. We now had to rely on this onside kick to see if we could recover it and Toledo would end up coming away with it, but don't count out the Huskies yet as we would get a stop on third down, and after using our last timeout, we needed them to miss this field goal, but they wouldn't. Down by 11, we weren't out, but this was going to be a very improbable comeback if we were going to be able to pull this one off, and it would have to start with Ethan Hampton getting us down the field this drive as he was on fire in the fourth quarter. That pass would get us all the way down to the two-yard line where he would find Jalen Johnson in the end zone, which would set us up for a two-point conversion, but Ontario Brown couldn't get it. We would be at the mercy of another onside kick here, which Toledo would recover no problem. And this comeback would fall short for the Huskies as they would drop this one 45-40 to to Toledo. Despite the one costly pick six, Ethan Hampton had an amazing game, throwing for almost 400 yards and six touchdowns. But those three three major sacks to start the second half really killed all the momentum we had. Despite the loss against Toledo, we still got right outside linebacker Max Brent to commit. And our next game was going to be the battle for the bronze stock against Ball State. But before that, we will be doing a deep dive next episode as we're going to go over the top 25, take a look at all the Heisman contenders here halfway through the season, do a deep dive recap of the first half of our season so far. But more importantly, we'll be taking a closer look at the recruits who have committed to play for us next year.